Earlier this month, second-class petty officer Mark Allen Lee became the first Navy SEAL to die in Iraq. He was killed when he stepped into heavy enemy fire in the city of Ramadi. SEALs are among the most elite and secretive forces in the U.S. military. Lee was buried this past weekend at Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery in San Diego. Andrew Phelps of member station KPBS has this remembrance. As a kid in Hood River, Oregon, one of Mark Lee's dreams was to become a professional soccer player. But as a freshman on the high school team, his chances looked slim. Mark was a horrible soccer player. Pastor Chuck Talcott was Lee's soccer coach. He would become Lee's lifelong mentor and friend. He worked so hard, and he had such a drive and determination to become an excellent player. He would ask me as he's growing up, do you think I have what it takes? Do you think I have what it takes? Apparently he did have it. Talcott says Lee eventually became a soccer star, a good team player, and even a bit of a show-off. Later, he overcame hellish training and pneumonia to become a Navy SEAL. Lee went on to dominate Iraqi soccer fields in friendly matches against Iraqi soldiers. But Lee's platoon mates say his ambition and courage never masked the size of his heart. You know, he just secured himself that, you know, a bunch of, bunch of big, tough alpha male dudes that, that, that aren't, are trying not to show any emotion at all, he managed to do it, and that's, uh, that's rare. That's Nick, one of several Navy SEALs who fought alongside Mark Lee in Iraq. They gathered at a family barbecue and agreed to speak to NPR on the condition we only use their first names. They remember Lee as brawny and boastful, but he also spoke openly of his love for God and family. When the guys played country music and rock and roll at base camp, Lee turned up his own soft rock. At the blackjack tables in Vegas, Lee drew big crowds with his boundless energy. Lee's platoon mates say the bond that formed in the first days of training makes them brothers. So when Lee was killed, it felt like losing family. While fighting insurgents, the team came under surprise fire from a nearby building. Lee stepped in front of the teammates to fire his machine gun at the attackers. Then he was hit. You know, it, it, it's baffling. Nick says each SEAL struggles with a loss. To see your friend do that and, uh, and then die, you know, it, it's, it's like an emotional experience for, for every guy in, in this room as well as a, the other guys that were there. And it's hard to describe, really. His buddies say Lee was a consummate professional, and the way he died is proof of that. Kevin says he hopes for the same ending if he meets his fate in combat. He died with his buddies, and it's hard to convey that to his family because a loss is a loss and you can't replace it. And I'm sure he's looking down, happy that we're around him and his final moments. Mark Lee's pastor, Chuck Talcott, once questioned Lee's ambition to join the military. Now Talcott says he is proud of Lee. To me, war is the last step a nation has to take to protect itself, to defend itself. And yet, glory can be found in war. What he did was glorious. He stood up for other people, and he died for other people. He died for a teammate. He died for us. Mark Allen Lee was 28 years old. Lee was posthumously awarded a silver star for gallantry and is survived by two siblings, his mother and his wife. For NPR News, I'm Andrew Phelps in San Diego.